Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm giving you a full-on walkthrough of my brand new Icon LX20 bass boat. It's the first one I've ever owned. You guys are not gonna wanna miss this. I'm giving you a tour from the front, all inside of it, all the way to the back. We're gonna do it in the shop first and then head out onto the water. Basically show you everything that I'm feeling from this thing. You're not gonna wanna miss this, stick around. To make things simple, I'm gonna start basically at the back of the boat and just go through the whole thing, outside, inside, all the way to the front of the boat, and that way it just makes things a little easier for everybody, but starting off first, gotta have the Mercury. Haven't ran a boat without the 250 Pro XS. Uh, obviously the four stroke, we got the Bob's Machine Shop Action Jack Plate. This is a 10 inch. I'm running a 23 Fury prop. That seems to be the deal for this boat right now. I uh, still got a lot of playing around to do. Eight foot power pole blades. Can't forget those. Those are essential, essential part of what I do. We got the Tote Right Toter. This is, this is pretty nifty. This actually, you can, uh, basically it locks it so you don't have to have the steer stops, but it keeps it locked in. So you don't have to have that, which is pretty cool. This does have the flow right drain plug. Check out the bottom of this thing too. I mean, come on with it. That's how you're gonna see like how this boat handles later. It's literally one of the best running boats I've ever ran. And I've ran a lot of good boats. I've ran a lot of bad boats, but this haul was specifically designed to, to handle big water, handle rough stuff, and make it the best riding boat there possibly is. We got the active imaging transducer up underneath from Lowrance. This thing's crystal clear, head and shoulders better than what it has been in the past couple years. So that new transducer is awesome. Into the back of the boat now, we got the, basically the charge plug is back in here, which I'm, I'm giving you guys the full on, the whole walkthrough, okay? This is the cool part. You start getting up into the back of the boat, Lamborghini doors. <laughs> like, that is sick. So, I'm gonna go over and pop the other one open. And what is so nice about this, this is a bass fisherman's rigging dream. So, when you go to install all of your stuff, which Nowadays we do. Batteries, wiring for all your electronics, power pole pumps, you name it. You can access it so easily. So you don't have to take the doors off or anything, which they do come off. So the first thing you see when you open up the door is this ghost prop, but it's an MDX prop holder. You can order it online. Super cool because I can mount that there. It's out of the way. I take a Bob's Machine Shop prop nut, put it on there. So if something was to happen, I can take this off, put it on my trolling motor super quick on the ghost and then you step up inside of here. Biggest thing is there's so much space down here. Already had this boat over to Trent at Sonar Pro, so he's done all the wiring, done all the, the hard work for me, which is, which is awesome. And we came up with this layout, basically. You know, I got the Bob's Machine Shop, the BSA prop holder. So this is a prop holder that you can order and basically place wherever you want to in your boat, which is very awesome because I'm able to get this spare prop in here. And then you have the power pull charge which is going to be my charger. I've ran it for the past, I don't know, three or four, since it's came out. Love the thing. It's helped me out tremendously on the water, keeping my X2 power batteries charged up. I got my standalone X2 power lithium. It's a 125 amp battery just on the driver's side. So that's going to run all my Lowrance graphs and just my electronics is all that battery is going to do, which is really key because it's consistent power all day long, which is a big deal for your your electronics. Now, you know, step over here to the other side. I have two 36 volt X2 lithiums, which is going to basically run my trolling motor, my Ghost Lowrance trolling motor, and I've got my one cranking battery, which is my X2 power AGM Group 31. So that's the big boy. I've always ran an AGM for my cranking battery. Loved having that. And this configuration that we have on this side, it allows the offset from the 
lithium batteries because basically most boats are made for AGM, so all that weight. So me and Trent from Sonar Pros came up with this design to have them on this side, which it just works a lot better that way. I got my power pole pumps that are super clean right there. And you're probably wondering what this is. We're gonna to get to that here in a second, but basically this is for my live wells. It's a cool little pump. So if, you if you're not aware with what Icon does with their live wells, it's pretty revolutionary in what they've done. So this is um, basically G-Juice for my live wells that I don't have to mess with and it's a pump to them. So pretty cool stuff. And so that is the back. Like I said, super easy to rig to get to anything. If something was to happen, you could reach all of your bilge pumps and everything. Extremely easy. Really love this part of the boat. All right, so behind the driver's seat, we got the storage compartment, super simple. You know, and this is cool because it's a tray you can take in and out. You got stuff in there, it's a pretty big tray and that allows you to get to, to stuff underneath there if you need to, so it's not just one big standard box. And then same for this side. You know, we got it's a, a little bit smaller of a tray, but again, it comes out as well. Guys, always keep a toolbox with you. Always carry that with me. I got my, my prop wrench, you know, socket here. We got spare transom bolts. Probably don't need them, but better to be safe than sorry. All right, so one of my favorite features of this boat is the Icon L2 Livewell system. So basically they got together with, uh, I believe two biologists that helped design this Livewell system. So it's all one. It has a divider plate inside, but as you can see, I mean, look at how, Look at how thick these live well lids are. They're very insulated. That's gonna help keep your water temperature down. Everything's sealed off. They squared, uh, basically rounded off all the edges. There's no sharp edges. The live well's blue because apparently that's when fish are less stressed out when they have that color. Basically it says protect the resource. That's what they're all about, protecting what we go out after every day. Everything's sealed off. So a big thing with this live well system is it's going to basically go all the way to the surface. You're not gonna have anything sloshing around, but this deal right here, you can see this plate, that is a chiller plate. So I'm able to actually go to my dash here and turn this chiller plate on and it acts like you put ice in your live well. It's gonna cool the water temperature. You're able to set what you want the water temperature to be just from that chill plate. Unbelievable. You know how many times we all have to go get ice in the mornings for those hot tournaments and stuff? You're able to regulate that temperature, keep it, you know, five, eight degrees, whatever it needs to be below, you know, what it is outside. That's awesome. Like that's a game changer for me. That's an overused word, game changer, but that is a game changer. The other cool thing was I, I showed you that container, is you're able to put like a G juice or fish well or live, yeah, something like that. You're able to, with the touch of a button, you're able to pump basically an ounce or a half ounce of fish rejuvenation into the live wells, you know, and it's going to be able to be there. You don't have to get out the bottle. You know exactly what it's going into. Super cool feature. I'm going to show you right here. All I got to do is hit my button. Check this. I can hit it on man and then literally hit the fish IV button. Boom. It's going to turn on. I can hit the chill plate it's automatically gonna turn on and start chilling out and start cooling the water. Hit all your buttons here. Very, very convenient, super easy. This, this touch screen is so fast. All right, so this is the cockpit area. I'm gonna go ahead and climb down into these seats. The biggest thing about these seats, you feel like you're sitting in a sports car. It's like luxury and it's a cool touch material. So those hot summer days when the sun's bearing down on it, you're not gonna feel that burn. Like when you sit down and you got your le your shorts and burning your legs or something, they always stay cool, which is super awesome. These are the most comfortable bass boat seats I've ever sat in. And you got this little day box here, obviously, you can keep all your stuff in it. It's got a little net in the back, two cup holders. And the other cool thing about these seats, you can slide back and forth. So you can adjust where you need to be at. Both passenger and driver side can adjust, which is super nice. And go over here to the main deal. Got our screen. It's the first time having a boat that has a screen like this. So it's like blowing me away at how easy it is to get to stuff, but also how you can keep track of everything, how much fuel you 
have, your battery voltage, your trim. You go into here, you can check this, and it's gonna tell you your live well temperature, trolling motor batteries, cranking battery. You go into your live well and you can totally adjust how you want your auto system to run on the L2 live well system. It, it's amazing. I'm still getting used to everything, but it is like climbing into a Lamborghini or something is what I feel like. I got me a little phone mount right here, a little Skosh $12 mount. I can set that there. You got your hard buttons here, so you can always, you know, your build, your lights, your live well, you can always have a hard button set. I have my RAM mount for my iPad, Google Earth, always a big part of when I'm fishing. I got my two Lowrance HDS 12 Pro units here. This is what my setup has always been, just side by side. Got them on my Boat Logics dual graph mount for the console. Super, super sturdy. Got my DuraSafe E-Locks. If you guys don't have the E-Locks, I highly recommend getting them, especially for how many electronics we have nowadays. Uh, super cool feature down here. We got a phone holder that is actually a charger. So you can charge everything. You got your, basically the starting key. You got a little compartment right there that you can put, you know, whatever. You got charging ports. For USB, I got my Bob's Machine Shop Hot Foot, all black, super, super cool. Switch for your drain plug right here and also for your live wells. And yeah, that's about it. That's, that's where I'm gonna be at, probably spending a couple hundred hours this year right here in this position. All right, so next up, we got the cooler. This is super cool right here of how they have the tools set up. Like you got your measuring board right here but having access, like easy access and a place for everything, I really, really like that because it's something that, this is our station when we're out on the water. You got baits you can throw right here, like you're cutting off. You can tell I haven't been fishing a whole lot. Well, I actually just cleaned the boat up, but typically, you know, you got jigs, whatever, everything piled up here. But then you got the cooler, and this is not just a cooler. This is, this is like a real cooler, like big time Yeti cooler or something. So, I mean, it's deep, super insulated. The, the lid is, you can tell that they've got this thing. It's twice as thick as what most lids probably should be. Got you a little um, a net right there. I'm gonna enjoy that here in the summer when things get nice and toasty. Another awesome feature about this console, almost forgot to mention it. I mean, access. So you got a day box here. I'll probably be keeping some line or just whatever, but you can access everything. You don't have to take off your grass. You don't have to pull off everything. There is an issue or just, you know, in the middle of rigging, have access to all this right here. This is awesome. Sealed off everything. You notice all the lids are sealed off with this rubber. So, you know, you're not getting moisture. You're not getting water up in there. So that's, that is awesome to me. Like it's super, super convenient to be able to have everything right there. Access it quickly. If I'm out in the middle of a tournament, if something was to happen, boom, I'm right there. Get, get whatever fix done. Okay, so next up we got the deck, right? This is a 20 foot bass boat. Look at how big this, this deck is. All kinds of room in it. And so the front end, obviously you can tell it's shaped a little differently, but it helps so much right here. So big thing for me, coffin style lid. So you got this, I mean, look at how much space. I took some, um, you can order them online, these little bait holders. Got these ones here that I added in, but basic, you know, tackle storage setup. But dude, like forever, forever long. As many tackle totes you wanna put in here. I'm gonna get a jerk bait in my head, but no, for real, look. I mean, there's still tackle in there. I haven't been able to fill it up yet, to be honest with you. There's a lot of dang storage in there. So I'm still working on some customizing. I'm gonna get a couple things and we're able to get the tackle sliding storage system in here as well. And I'll probably be getting that soon, which is gonna help give you more options on how you have stuff set up. Next, we got the rod locker. Pretty straightforward. I do like how this is all finished. Everything about this boat, that's the, probably the biggest thing that I've noticed. Everything about this boat is finished. Like when you get up under the top cap, 
you get up under here, there's no loose fiberglass, there's no, it's all finished. And I've seen these boats when the cap has been off and it's just, you know, the base and it's just like, everything's finished. Looks like you could fish out of it that way. But they got a, basically a tier step down system for your rods to sit on. I probably got 12 setups in there. I can fit a lot, but it's all finished. So no carpet. This is all like that little padding that gets wet. It's going to drain out easily. We got this box here. So this is where basically you can keep your line or whatever you want. It's another day box deal, soft plastics. You got your fire extinguisher down here. You could probably put something else down in there, honestly. I'll get creative with that later. Last but not least, we have basically the other rod locker side. And I typically keep my life jackets, rain jackets, stuff like that. I put a little baggie here. I keep an X2 jump starter pack. so. If something was to happen with my batteries, I can jump start it with this deal right here. I advise everybody to get one. Um, it, it, it'll save your day, you know, that's for sure. You don't wanna have to be relying on someone that, hoping to see you. I got my active targets on this wall. I actually have a spare active target as well. If, if something was to ever happen, today's day and age in our tournament fishing, forward facing sonar means so much. So I, I just had um, had Trent install a backup, basically active target. So just to be better to be safe than sorry. Again, this is all finished, which makes it nice. It's gonna drain out, get wet, whatever. Very sturdy. Again, the lined rubber there, it's gonna keep the water out. Attention to detail. That's what these guys are all about at Icon. I hope you guys are seeing it through this video of how much, you know, just little things that make a big difference to us as anglers. Now let's step up to the front of the boat. And as you can tell, the way this boat is shaped, it's shaped differently than most bass boats, but that's all because of a purpose. You know, the engineers at Icon, they've developed this boat to basically be the best running boat, rough water, you name it, it doesn't have spray over. And that was one of the things that I was kind of intrigued about. Like I thought maybe I wouldn't, you know, be comfortable with it, but dude, it gives you so much more room at the front. Instead of being a point, you have so much more room for your rods, you know, fishing up here. I mean, you can step up on the front to get, you know, retrieve lures and everything else. So, you know, I never skipped a beat with it, you know, and I've had people ask me that before, but right off the bat, you got a tool holders up here, two dual cups. I got my two Lowrance HDS 12 Pro units. They're on Boat Logics uh, stacked graph mounts. Again, if you're not running Boat Logics mounts, especially when you get on big water, like they're gonna protect your investment. Very, very sturdy. Got my DuraSafe e locks I got my power pole stomp switches up here, 47 inch ghost trolling motor, and I've got two Lowrance Active Target 2s on the front. So one for forward and one for scout mode. Got my point one antenna mounted up here. Got your buttons over here, which is super convenient. You can basically hit your trim up and trim down, which I probably have to do quite a bit when I'm fishing shallow so you can just step on that, have access to everything. And it's also got two charging ports up here as well. So if you're running GoPros or whatever, you know, you can do that. This is where I'm at most of the time. I love it. Absolutely love it of, of how much space you have in a 20 foot bass boat. All right, so I forgot to mention a big piece of this boat and it's the actual boat cover. As you can see, I did get the boat wrapped. Super excited about that. The boat cover, big deal for what I do. Probably the biggest thing that you can see right here is this cover is made for dual grass at the console. Now that's just too smart. Now you don't have to worry about ripping your boat cover. You're only running one graph, you can zip this. It's got this little access port right here. You can get into your boat. How many times do you forget something in your boat and you gotta climb in and get your keys or whatever? So I really like that. And overall the cover fits really good on the boat and it looks like it has uh, suspension systems in it, but I'm gonna show you how the poles are just built in. So every time, no matter what, your boat is gonna be covered correctly. It's gonna be holding the posts up without adding any other accessories. So that's the pole that's always gonna be locked in to your cover every time you put it on and it's easy. It just sets right here. So then you got your second pole up front 
and all this is going to do is basically keep the cover from you know getting water pulled up on it creating that that canopy it's going to stay up high so really really quality cover that i had to get in this video because it's it's a pretty important part of what i do and keeping my stuff dry keeping it protected and then last but not least we got the bob's machine shop prop nut here went with the flat black it's clean basically you can take that off change it out take fishing line out you don't have to get the wrenches out and everything so very convenient to have that as well and then as you step down off the front of the boat i added steps onto my trailer this year didn't get the pole i typically don't like the pole because it sits there and wraps for 25,000 miles, but I did the steps. And one thing that I do like to do for the steps is add this stuff, not sponsored. Anytime you're dealing with water and plastic or rubbery surfaces, I added a couple strips of that. I even added onto the tongue of the trailer. Dude, telling you, don't bust your butt. Get the anti-slip grip tape. You can shred, go skateboarding, whatever. Speaking of shredding, we're gonna go ahead, get this thing loaded up. We're gonna head to the lake right now. All right, guys, we're out here. The wind is blowing. Of course it is, it's 45 degrees. It's a little bit of chop on the water uh, out towards the main channel. If we can run some of this side channel stuff, we'd be all right. But basically, I'm gonna jump it up on pad, show you guys how quick it, it can get up on pad and then top end speed. So uh, I'm sorry about the wind and the mic. We're basically gonna take over with the GoPros from here and show you guys that stuff. Just kind of give you a run through of how this boat looks on the water. At the end of the day though, the biggest thing I can say is, is if you want to check this thing out, take a ride in it. I mean, if you see me at a boat ramp somewhere, say, hey Hunter, can you take me out? You know, run me two minutes out across there and back. That's when you notice, I mean, to me personally, that's when, when I got in Jacob's boat last year, that's when I noticed like how legit these boats are. So, like actually on the water running them. So. You know, this video can't give you all the justice, but it can give you close to what I'm feeling. So stay tuned, let's go run this thing. All right, so we're gonna see how fast this thing jumps up on pad here. Now we're gonna give this thing a run. Let it warm up for a little bit. Right around the corner here. Basically be out of the wind. Stop and fish for a little bit. Hands already got cold. I said, screw it. Let's go run this thing. All right, so we're gonna jump this thing up on pad, get it up to top end speed, and uh, see what she does.
All right, guys, we just took this thing on that run right there, got it up basically 69, 69 to five. I did get it up to 70. I played around with the jack plate a little bit. And honestly, I haven't ran this thing like hard, like fast too many times. I got 25 hours on the engine. Most of the time that's cruising around at, you know, 35 to 40 miles an hour, just looking, idling, graphing, stuff like that. If I can do 69 to 70 mile an hour on tournament day, I'm tickled to death. I've been doing this long enough to know that, you know, all the doc talk of people's boats doing 75 and blah, blah, blah. And then you look over and you're doing 68 miles an hour and then they're not, they're not going anywhere. You're locked onto the rear end. So that's, you know, 68 to 70 miles an hour. If you can do that tournament day, you're not getting passed by very many people. You know, you got a, a few exceptions out there that's going to be doing, you know, that, that high end speed. But, you know, at the end of the day, if I can do what we just did right there, tickled to death because you're not getting passed by everyone. I do have uh, basically 29 gallons of fuel in the boat, so full tank is 50 gallons, 20 gallons there. Uh, if you add a marshal in, but I do have all my tackle, everything's you know loaded is, is what I would be considered for a tournament day. And the one thing I'm probably gonna do is test out some Bob's Machine Shop wedges. And two degree wedges, I think I'm gonna test those out. And what that's gonna do is allow me to trim the engine up a little bit more, and I've done it on boats in the past, and it, and it just gives you a little bit higher RPM, allows you to trim it up a little bit more. But overall, you know, it, the biggest thing I can say, like I said before, if you can get in one of these boats and drive it around or ride around in it and just feel the comfort of it, that's what really sold me on these boats. Jumping in the boat with Jacob last year and you know, besides looking at it and everything else, that's what really sold me on it. So if you ever see me like at a boat ramp or somewhere and you're, you're interested in an icon, ask me to, to take you on a run you know i'll run you out there for two or three minutes to come back you know it's little things like that that you know once you sit in one and see it you're like aha this makes sense now if you're at the bassmaster classic or at a at a dealership ask them to take you out and ride in one it, it's not that big of a deal so now if i didn't catch any fish that day i might not be too happy to go go drive my boat around a little bit longer but you know, I, I, I would do that for you guys. So I appreciate you watching the whole video. It's cold. I'm gonna go try to catch a bass if you can even hear this audio right now. Yeah, I mean, the wind's blowing straight into it. Looking forward to the 2024 Bassmaster Elite Series season. Fishing out of this thing. Yeah, I'm stoked. So appreciate y'all for watching. If you got any questions, comments, leave them below. If you wanna check out Icon Boats, visit their website, iconboats.com. Appreciate you guys. Be careful, have a happy new year. I will see y'all soon.